Welcome back to NSTV Travel Vlog. We're back and exhilarated for another adventure. Time to go to what has been dubbed as the last frontier of the Philippines, the attraction filled Palawan. Join us as we explore probably one of the least visited destinations of the country, worthy to be part of everybody's bucket list. Our adventure starts with a flight from Manila to what has been called as a city in the forest, Puerto Princesa. A popular hub to other places in Palawan, Puerto Princesa is also known for its world famous underground river its lush dense forests, as well as the many plant and animal species endemic to the city. Hopefully, we get to circle back and spend time to tour, film, and feature Puerto Princesa. But for now, it's time to continue on the next leg of our journey. So off we go to the southernmost tip of the main Palawan Island, Bulinluyan Port. After a 50-minute flight from Manila all the way to Puerto Princesa International Airport, we then took a six-hour road trip all the way to Puniluyan Port. It's our day one and we're gonna start by going for an island tour. So if you're ready, let's go! So we're here at Canimeran Island. This is our first stop for the day. And this is a nice place actually to chill. It's quite a big island. Um, powdery white sand beach. Water's pretty clear. And a lot of people actually have, uh, I guess, lunch here. Uh, depending on what time you actually get here. Uh, what's interesting about this place, I think it's the only island which houses uh, peacocks. You know? And uh, a bit of trivia, it happens to be 
the the bird in the seal of Puerto Princesa. But this is already Malaba. Okay, so if you're ready, let's hit the next island. Let's go! Patawan Island is actually an islet with low-lying trees, a pink-painted beach, and a unique sandbar. The island is shaped like a dolphin when it's low tide. However, a crescent moon-like figure emerges when the tides are a bit high. The beach is rather vast considering the size of the island, a perfect place to just chill and enjoy nature. So that ends up and sums up our day one here in Balaba. As you know, we visited two islands today, Hanimeran and Patawan Islands. We wanted to visit more, but unfortunately, the tides were rather strong today, proving, our, our, you know, proving some challenges along the way. But we definitely will be visiting more islands and showing you more of the beauty of Balaba tomorrow. But for tonight, we're kind of wet and uh, cold, so we're just gonna have dinner and call it a night. So, come on. Good morning, so it's day two here in Poblacion in Balaba. So as promised last night, we're gonna do more island hopping today so we can show you how beautiful and amazing this place is. So if you're ready, let's go island hopping. So for a change, instead of the regular pump boat, we're using what they call damas. So what we've, from what we heard, this is what they've been using for quite some time now here in Balaba. What's nice about this, this boat, besides being motor powered, is that it travels as fa uh, double, twice as fast as the regular pump boat. So if you want to, to tour and visit more islands, 
this is the way to go. So braving the challenging water conditions, off we go to our first island for the day. Hi hey guys, so we're here at our first stop, Kamyaran Island. Nakasama natin si Kuya Jojo, one of the local tour guides here in Balabak, Palawan. So, trivia, no? a bit of a fun fact. Well, they were on lockdown for two years. What they would do for food is to come here and fish every two days, no, Kuya yes, Jo? Yes, sir. Anong klaseng uh, isda naman nauhuli nyo dito? First, barracuda. Barracuda. Snapper. Snapper. Tanigi. Tanigi. Very nice island. On the other side is the pink, where you will find the pink beach. Uh, but otherwise here, powdery white fine, fine sand. And of course, the crystal clear water. After an hour of enjoying the pink beach, we then headed off to the next island, iconic for its light blue cottage on stilt, standing over a rich blue beach, Onok Island. right now in our second island which is Anuk Island. This is probably one of the more iconic islands here in Malaba and it's very 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 nice. Uh, as you can see the water is pretty clear, very uh, pristine, not too calm but very clear. But if you get the chance get the chance to visit the island you'll see here that they do have a lot of things to offer. Number one they do have this big cottage where you can relax with your friends and maybe have some lunch. At the same time, if you want to explore, you can go kayaking. You can also check out the sea turtles. And also, if you're lucky enough, find some giant clams. Also, if you go further down the island, you see there are a lot of beaches. So, if you visit Balabak, don't, don't ever make the mistake of missing this island. After a sumptuous lunch with our newfound friends, onwards we go determined to hit more islands. Our next stop, Punta Sibari, another idyllic place to camp out or just chill the day away.
with its own long stretch of fine sand beach and a sandbar nearby, this island definitely tops the list of must-see spots in Balaba. This is also probably the only island in the area where your feet will actually sink into the sand as you walk by the beach. Then off we go to our next stop, this time to the unspoiled and quaint Kanibungan Island. So we're here now at Kanibungan Island. That's right, Kanibungan. Um, if you happen to pass by here, it's really nice. Um, we'll show you the drone shot, the drone footage of the island. Uh, but one thing we noticed, the sand here is extra powdery fine. And of course the water, like any other island around Balabak or in Balabak, it's pretty clear with all different shades of blue. Uh, they also allow uh, day trips here for I think 100 pesos or 2, 2 US dollars. Or you can bring your own tent and stay the night over uh, for 300 pesos or about $6. By the way, they do have a generator set on standby in case you do decide to stay overnight. Before heading back to Balabak town proper, we then took another two-hour damas ride to an island with a private runway and a starfish-filled sandbar nearby, Kandaraman Island. So we're here at Kandaraman Island, our last stop for the day. Um, of course, they have its uh, long beach, powdery white sand, and crystal clear water. And just a few minutes away from here, there is a sandbar called Starfish Sandbar. Obviously, because there are a lot of starfish when it's low tide. Interestingly enough, we also found that they have a private runway here. Hopefully, soon they'll make it public so you guys can come here much easier. Um, also, if for you guys who want to, you know, really enjoy nature and the beach, they also offer overnight stay. You just need to bring your own tent, I think for a fee of 200 pesos or about $4. Pretty affordable. So with that, time to head back to Balabak Town Proper. Two days of island hopping was honestly not enough to cover all the amazing islands in Balabang. While each one has its unique charm, all the islands are really reminders that the best destinations, wherever you go, are the ones that remain untouched. Nature has its own way of maintaining its delicate balance, so it's really up to us visitors to make sure that its innate beauty is left undisturbed. Good morning, bittersweet moment because we have to leave Balabak unfortunately. Um, but we do hope you enjoyed the, the two days of island hopping and going around Balabak town proper. Um, if, we hope you enjoyed the vlog and if you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget we are now called NSTV Travel Vlog. If you have any suggestions on where we should go, please let us know with the comment section below. And of course we can't end this vlog without thanking our newfound friends for joining us in our island hopping tour. Special thanks, of course, for the people of Balaba for making this trip, this whole experience, truly memorable. On behalf of Bobby, this is Herbie of NSTV Travel Vlog. 
See you at the next stop.